So it turns out that uh, I can even see that the camera went off. You know what I mean? That's pretty bad, eh? That's because I wear glasses. That's because I'm a, a mongoloid when it comes down to that. But we're going to take a two minute break here, listen to something worthwhile. Are you tired of dad? Dad, no one wants to hear your stupid Vietnam stories. Are you tired of mom? Hi, Angel. Do you want to read a book or go outside? No! It's here at The arcade comes to your living room only without the creepy guys offering to show you puppies. Awesome! The Degenitron. You can play video games just like you were in the arcade. Excellent! The Degenitron gaming system plays three exciting games, including Defender of the Fate, where you save the green dots with your fantastic flying red square. Cool! Monkey's Paradise, where you swing from green dot to green dot with your red square monkey. That's red! And Penetrator, where you smash the green dots deep inside the mysterious red square. Wow! The Degenitron brings arcade realism to your living room. It can even take quarters, and a strange, sweaty man comes fight and empty the machine on Fridays. It's Degenitron! <laughs> Degenitron, fighting the evil of boredom. I'll never go to school again, Degenitron! So there you go, Degenitron. Uh, that's about as real as it gets, eh? That's, uh, <coughs> that's what the kids are doing now. Being and playing with Digenitron. I mean, this is all from Grand Theft Auto. And, uh, these are the adverts that come from Grand Theft Auto. And I tell you what, they're more realistic. I mean, this is the key. This is the genius of Grand Theft Auto is, this is true to life. This is the way the world is. Degenitron. It's when we when we look at some of the games that are being that are out there, you know, uh, majority of them are, are designed by the industrial military complex. So I can go out there and I can I can buy a PlayStation and I can play games and throw a hundred and five millimeter howitzer shells on uh, on people. Uh, I can engage them with. Um, with 40 millimeter grenade launches, I can go in there. I can I can carve someone up. I can I can uh, shoot them from long range with a sniper rifle, from 50 caliber. I can watch their bodies explode, and just like the real thing. Uh, why do you think they do that? Why do you think so much money and effort and time goes in to putting this stuff together? It's so someone like me, from a kid, once upon a time. You know, I'm thinking to myself, well, how is the world? You know what I mean? What is the world like? And what am I going to do? Uh, oh, I tell you what, I'm going to join the military and I'm going to use all this Gucci stuff and I'm going to fucking eradicate people off the face of the planet. People that are trying to defend themselves, basically. Afghanistan, 9 11, Iraq. We're talking about the eradication of certain bloodlines that go back to an occultic element. You know, we're talking about what was Iraq. Iraq wasn't about freaking, you know, any any of these things that we're told. You know, weapons of mass destruction, this and that. Oh, what was all that about? The weapons of mass destruction are being used now. And that's depleted uranium. You know, that's got a half life of like 10,000 years or something like that. And so what we do is we kill everybody off in Iraq, you know what I mean, over a long period of time. But at the same time, what we do is we, we chop their heads off with swords. Uh, we shoot shoot the kids, you know what I mean, uh, and, and say, oh yeah, sorry about that, you know what I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a shame, um, but hell, you know what I mean, what we've got to do is, is carry out the hidden agenda, and the hidden agenda is the eradication of some of these bloodlines that still exist here on earth, now when it comes down to the bloodlines that think they have uh, complete rule uh, and capacity to, you know, um, rule over everybody on the, on the planet, they need to go out there, they also need to eradicate the other bloodlines, the bloodlines that might have linked DNA um, and, and a capacity to be able to interlink with the universe, um, the way it should be, it shouldn't be about internet, I should be, able to, I should be able to interlink with the universe and find out what it is that I need to know 
simply by my bio-spiritual interface, my mind itself. But I can't do that. I can't do that because I've been corrupted. I've been corrupted from the very day I was born. I was birthed into this reality, you know what I mean, and given my my contract name, and, uh, and there I am, you know what I mean. I'm a piece of meat, profane going to the people that own me. I'm owned on Wall Street and I'm worth probably something like three million uh, English pounds or something like that. And uh, my physical capacity, what they can get out of me, what I put in, what I, what I did put in when I was with the military, you know what I mean? I was worthy, I was worth something to them because I had a capacity to be able to help them and aid them in their agenda. And their agenda was what we talked about now, the eradication of certain bloodlines, eradication and, and gaining gaining access to, to places like Iraq so you know black and special forces can go in there and pick up all the occultic knowledge, break walls down, you know, just like Chris Everard shows in uh, I think it's Spirit World Three or something like that, where they go in there and they get all the genie bottles, you know what I mean? And they've got hold of these demonic spirits. Uh, and they can do whatever they wish to do, and whatever they're doing with them. Let's go back to John Todd. Let's go back to what he was saying about when it comes down to music, when it comes down to rock music. It's demonic by its nature. When, when that music goes out, before, before it's put out to the masses, it goes through a magical demonic ritual. And they invoke demons into every single CD that goes out, every single tape. It goes out and basically anybody that has that CD or that tape, they also have a certain demon that has a capacity to be able to influence them. And no doubt negatively in this third dimensional reality there's the energy flow. So we look at we look at anything. Let's have a look. Yeah, okay. Six six six. Yeah, when it comes down to this barcode, when it comes down to every single barcode, barcodes, barcodes, oh yeah, it's like six six six, you know what I mean? That has an effect on me in this third dimensional reality. It has an effect on me. It has an effect on everybody. So to purify yourself, to, to go out and live, say, in a desert, yeah, and have on a salt trail in the middle of North Africa, for instance, you know what I mean? Even though they're probably chemtrailing there as well, like they have been here. For the first time in, in 17 years, I've seen them chemtrailing this place now, you know what I mean? I came back, what, a year and a half ago, coming up to two years ago, and they're chemtrailing this place. I mean, you've got North African deserts, Antarctica. I wonder if they're, I wonder if they're chemtrailing Antarctica. I mean, not a lot can grow there, can it? You know what I mean? I mean, you've got everything that's underneath the ice. New, New Berlin and all that sort of business. But so, where am I going with this? Where am I going with this? Grand Theft Auto. The reality is the reality, and we're made to look and laugh at reality, but as stupid as this is, this is how society is. Society is fucked. Completely fucked. What's this next advert here? You know? At the law firm of DeLeo and Furax, we understand that sometimes life throws you a curveball. We help our blue chip clients get their lives back after circumstances have conspired against them. Just listen. It was an unfortunate accident what happened to my wife on that precarious cliff. The lady with Florence can't bring my wife back, but they made sure I didn't end up in the slammer. I was unfortunate enough to be found with 15 kilos in my spare tire. I was so <laughs> mad at the auto repair shop that sold me that tire. Thanks to De Leon and Furax, the district attorney saw it that way too. Yeah. I accidentally torched a quickie mart when my medication ran out. Uh, American woman, there you go. De Leon and Furax helped me and the community by ensuring a healthy settlement from the pharmaceutical company. At De Leo and Furax, we understand the judicial system and will ensure the truth is heard, no matter how improbable. 
we're not cheap, but what price can you put on truth? Call the Leo and Purex today at 866-974-2333. That's 866-9-SHADY. The Leo and Purex. Accidents happen, and we'll prove it. So there you go. I mean, what does that tell you? We've got, we've got, you're getting away with murder, getting away with selling drugs, and, uh, and getting away with torturing a quickie mile because the medication she was on ran out. And that's the reality. I mean, let's look at the Americans that I know. Uh, let's look at the Americans I've met recently here in Sabah. There's not one American that I don't know that isn't completely emotionally fucked. And how do I know that? It's because I spent a period of time with one of these Americans. Female. Completely fucking emotionally fucked. And I tried to get involved and, and help where I could. And I needed help too. So the idea was for us to help each other. But uh, it didn't really work out that way. It turned into a complete fucking nightmare twistedness. You know, all it took was to go back to basics, to really just purify ourselves, to be able to work off the basic elements again. But that didn't happen. It just got more and more and more and more twisted and toxified and detrimental until it turned into a complete friggin' nightmare. And like, now I'm the outsider. Everybody takes her... Uh, takes her side of things and I'm the evil doer you know so yeah there you go I mean that's that's the reality of that and then there's my other friend you know I mean my other friend oh uh, well, no I don't have a friend I mean obviously my ex is not my friend she's my enemy you know I mean now we could put that down to for instance maybe she is a fucking vampire maybe she is a vampire you know what I mean you know, vampires are without love the vampiristic element, and when I'm talking about vampirize or vampiristic elements, I'm not talking about drinking blood, I'm talking about taking life force, and that's what was taken away from me through that relationship that I had, that period of time, it pushed me to a level where I nearly fucking died, I nearly died, I nearly died through that fucking relationship, because I met up with that fucking American, you know what I mean? who was twisted in mind, body, and soul. Oh, they were good points. They were good points to her. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, but when we talk about balance, when we talk about... Now, I knew I didn't have balance. I said that from the start. I said, look, I haven't got balance here. I need to regain balance, my composure. Uh, I knew that. I needed to work on it. When it came down to her, uh, there, there was, the balance was off. The twistedness comes out. The reality comes out. You can see just how fucked human beings are and can be within this bullshit matrix reality shape that we find ourselves in. And that's where we do. We find ourselves in this bullshit, twisted crap. Not good. Not good at all. And it's a fucking shame because what we've got is human beings missing out on each other. We've got not only human beings, but we've got we've got entities, we've got soul elements that are supposedly have a capacity to come together to be able to aid and assist each other and find that balance and that composure, you know, within this reality. Uh, allowing us to be able to go back to whatever stage we go back to once we pass on from this third dimensional reality. But the idea is to is to work in conjunction together. This is what I feel anyway. Uh, I, I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe I'm supposed to go out there and and have conflict and uh, and and find myself angry and and the other one angry as well and angry at each other and then. There's nothing but angry, 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 angry. And then we have this war of the sexes and all that sort of business. You know, what's the point of that? Conflict. There's so much fucking conflict in this world. It's all about conflict and division. 
divide and and it's what I want and it's what the society wants and fucking bollocks to that shit. Whatever happened to just having some water and some basic foods and living off the land and, and, and living in peace and harmony and taking time out and making a basket, making a fishing net, <laughs> building a fire, singing some songs, you know what I mean? working in conjunction with the natural vibrations of a jungle. Instead, no, we've got to go there and take our fucking tattoo machines and fucking tattoo people, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I've got, to, I've got to fucking paint a fucking box, you know what I mean? And, and all this fucking crap, and it's got to be my way, my way, my way. What escape did I have at that time? I had, uh, I had the capacity to run up the hill. For two hours, two and a half hours, I'd be running, 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 and I'd come back and I'd shit, shower, shave, and all that sort of business. And what would I come back to? I'd come back to a fucking lost soul, you know? I'd come back to depravity again, and arguments, and, and soul sucking. My soul was, was sucked away. I ebbed, ebbed away, and I couldn't find any composure. Even though I tried, I tried and tried and tried to get in there. But now I look at it, I do believe that there was a demonic factor there. We had an individual who was tattooed. I mean, I have tattoos. But these are the demonically run tattoos. These are not because I wanted to go out into normal day society and go, hey, look how radical I am. Uh, look at my radical tattoo that everybody else has got, you know what I mean? Uh, covered in tattoos, was worried, was worried about what other people thought, constantly being judged. I know she had a hard time, I know she had a, a hard upbringing, in some ways. Hard, she doesn't know what hard is, you know what I mean? Hard is hard, you know what I mean? Hard is, hard is really fucked. And uh, if you want to know what really fucked is, then I'll tell you my story one day. But yeah, I mean, possibly she grew up satanically ritually abused. She grew up in the essence of uh, witchcraft and, and black magic was sexually abused. Uh, I know she grew up in America, so she was watching TV like everybody else. And society portrays a certain reality to an American in America. You know? and so they're pretty much fucked from the very start. You know, I was willing to give that the benefit of the doubt. Uh, try and see through the falsity and, and aid her in, in seeing what it was that, you know, or, or aspects of her life, why it may have gone that way, how she could overcome certain things, go back to the very basics, you know, the essence of being able to take a breath in, breathe out, you know what I mean, and see it for what it is, and come to terms with that. One has to be able to look into the mirror, you know, shake one's hand and say, hey, you know, I'm with you on that one, you know what I mean, come to terms with things acceptance but if you're not prepared to accept you know your effort to remain as you are is what limits you and, and that's what we have normally through fear and normally through the element of ego <clears throat> people are not willing to be able to adapt and and modify and 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 cleanse themselves it's a cleansing Toxification. I think it was Michael Tassarian that talks about how toxified we can become, you know? I mean, that's what we have, that's what this world is, is, is toxified. And where does it come from? It comes from bullshit. It comes from these people that have the capacity to be able to influence the majority of people. Now if people weren't influenced from the very very start and constantly influenced on a 24 hour, 7 days a week, 
365 days a year factor and if those human beings could just take a breath in and breathe out and work on a natural capacity I feel that the world would be less toxified but instead we find it toxified we find all these elements that come in and uh, we're forced to have to deal with this toxification and through that the human being loses out on themselves because they forget, oh shit, I'm a human being, you know? I can breathe in and breathe out and everything that I need is around me, the problems that are inside me, the problems can be overcome, they can be expelled, they can be cleansed, they can be cleaned. And that's the way a pagan tribe would have done it before in the past. But now the toxification, the, the distractions are there in your face all the time, electricity the internet, phones, electromagnetic radiation, um, chemical trails, demonic, you know, demonic TV sounds, we've got, we've got everything working against us. So how does one, how does a human being go back to finding that basic element again? Like I said, you know, it would be nice to be able to go into a desert or a jungle like I used to, live in a jungle Listen to the jungle, listen to the natural sounds of a jungle. Take a breath in, breathe out. Eat some non-genetically modified foods, drink some clean water. And you find that balance again. And then I find myself back in a friggin' fucking city after fucking leaving the fucking jungle stupid enough, stupid enough to get myself involved with some kind of relationship, some bullshit fucked up relationship with a fucking yank, a female who has ideas about reality because she spends the majority of her time on fucking Facebook and phones and the opinions of others. Whatever happened to just like work it out for yourself, you know? So fuck it, you know what I mean? No, I understand where you're coming from and that, that's just information. But it's how I process that information, how I work it out for myself. I tried that method as well, but the point being was what she worked out and what she was finding out about herself, she didn't like. She didn't like that about herself. You know, because the truth, The truth is sometimes hard to deal with, especially if you've been brainwashed from the very, very fucking start. The truth sets you free, but unless you're willing to go through the death of ego, the death of insecurity and fear and falsity and garnish and bullshit, and allow yourself to be reborn uh, with a with a clear a clear mind, body and spirit. I mean that's what we're looking for is clear mind, body and spirit. A cleansed mind, body and spirit gives you, a, I feel, a better capacity to be able to deal with the realities of this third dimensional reality that we find ourselves in, this holographic element, this ride that we find ourselves on. I'm still coughing. I'm still drinking really bad coffee. <clears throat> so what's my point? My point on that factor is I still feel like the outsider. I still am the outsider. I, uh, unless I can form back to a reality in which I know it is just built on bullshit there is no space for me within society. This society, I go back to fucking UK, I go back to my family or, or what I class as, or people class as friends. There are people I know, I know hundreds if not thousands and thousands of people. I've met people uh, and I've had interactions with people throughout my meager time in this third dimensional reality. 
I can't go back once I've gone forward. Sometimes you have to go back to be able to go forward. That I understand. That I do understand and I take into consideration. But the point being is to be able to sell myself out in having to go back. How then do I go forward correctly? Keeping my own self but it's difficult to do. It's very difficult to do. And even when I've tried to do that, and I'm expelled again from society, from their rules and regulations and their expectations and all that sort of crap, I turn around and I say, no, fuck it, I'm not interested. I'm not fucking interested. You know, I'll take the other path. I'll take the lonely path, the path that goes off on its own, the dark path that most people don't want to take, even though they live within the darkness. I'll take the path that most people don't lead. I'll go that little bit further, as it were. And that's pretty much how I've lived my life. I've, I've turned around and said, you know what, fuck it. It's only when you've lost everything that you're prepared to do anything. And one doesn't need anything apart from themselves, realistically. Maybe I should cut away. Maybe I should just get rid of my poor pass and my passport and my fucking American Express, but my, my, my car that allows me to take out talismans in order for me to be able. Maybe I should just take a breath in, breathe out, put on one set of clothes and just start fucking walking this earth. That was what I was going to do. I was going to leave at one point the jungle and I thought about going and doing a 10 day med uh, meditation thing where you don't talk, you don't do anything and that was in Kuala Lumpur and then I was just going to fucking put some really basic clothes on. My Silat Badu little bag and I was gonna walk <laughs> and my idea and this was a bloody good idea <clears throat> in a lot of ways I wish I did it and maybe I should think about doing it again I was gonna go and walk to Tibet how the fuck does one do that you ask I was gonna walk out of this 10 days of, of meditation where I can't talk to anybody and I was going to walk through Kuala Lumpur and I was just going to live off the land because I have that fucking capability and just make my way across the earth on a pilgrimage I suppose you could call it and I was going to make my way to Thailand not Thailand, Tibet sorry, Tibet I was going to, uh, my plan was to walk through China, and just walk through China. If it gets cold, then there's a possibility that along the way, a human being along the way might even pass on some warm clothing to me. You know, that does happen, that stuff. It's called natural synchromysticism, where people care for each other, people pass on things. Or you improvise. So, well, fuck it, I'll improvise. I 